Hi everyone, I'm pleased that we're here today with uh, Professor Nikolai Velinov, who is the director of our hands-on courses. Nikolai, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. So a lot of the questions are coming through about the hands-on courses, and I just wanted to talk with you so that we can uh, uh, raise visibility and awareness. What is a hands-on course? The hands-on courses are uh, targeting the practical skills of uh, our trainees compared to the training courses where we have a lot of extensive discussion groups and theoretic sessions hands-on course is uh, dedicated uh, to a practical skill and specifically whether uh, you want to train a specific um, um, operation or approach or more general spine or cranial so uh, we have several modules uh, we have divided them basically into cranial and spine which was which have cranial step one which is the more basic step where you learn the more basic approaches and cranial step two where you would have for example more advanced approaches same for spine we of course have also other courses which are targeting microsurgical abilities microsurgical course um, and we have started last uh, several years the endovascular courses which i think are very important where we would like to, to train our vascular neurosurgeons in uh, endovascular hands-on abilities. So if I understand it correctly, we have cranial, we have spinal, and we have other Many others. Speci specialty, <laughs> other, other specialty yeah. courses. The cranial have step one and step two, so we go from a basic to a more advanced level. Yes. In spine, we have, again, step one, step two. And advanced. You and are organizing the advanced. Exactly. <laughs> so we have what you're organizing yeah. is the, the basic hands-on courses, which involves both cranial and spinal. But then on top of that, there's also the advanced courses, Absolutely. which are organized by the subspecialty sections, sections. Yes. which is a lot of work. So how do how do you encourage someone to come on the course? Should they be worried about what level of training they're at and Ab when they come? Absolutely not. I think we have courses for everyone. That's the main idea. The basic courses, uh, for example, cranial step one and spine step one, they are targeting more residents between year one and three. And then cranial step two, they are targeting residents already in their end of training, like four or five. And I think that microsurgical courses, despite that we are organizing them for residents, they could be any, uh, even board certified neurosurgeon can go in there because I think there is no proper time to learn to do a bypass. I mean, it's a very specific and very um, uh, difficult uh, task. So uh, you need a specific training and you might even do several courses. One thing is that you might have residents coming to train in these courses like during their training in their countries, but we also have like people who are already board certified and they want to, to learn a specific approach that which they have to do, so they come and they also are part of these courses, not necessarily only residents. Good. And, and I know that uh, we try to make them uh, affordable. Uh, getting ca cadavers these days is, is not cheap, but we don't only use cadavers, do we? True. Uh, we have started using, uh, of course, in the last year, uh, simulators. Uh, especially also for the endovascular courses and also for the other courses. We are trying to implement uh, simulators. We, of course, in the future years, I'm sure virtual reality is a uh, possibility and an issue which will, uh, which will rise. And, uh, but for the, uh, let's say, surgical approaches, we need to use cadavers in order to really uh, try to create the same environment uh, that the surgeon will have in his, o op or in his uh, operating theater and show layer by layer how the surgical approach is done. So we're still, the most important part would be the cadaver course. And of course, we implement different modalities to support this uh, and to help them first with the anatomical knowledge and second to show a different perspective because living in a 3D exoscopes and all these new technologies, we need to, to have a more different perspective than the conventional one. It's true, that our specialty is very technologically driven, but we need to keep the basics uh, sound in knowledge and then we'll build on them. Some trainees say, oh, my department never does this operation. Why would I invest time, money, energy to, to learn things on a course that unfortunately I may not be allowed to do? <laughs> That's a very good question. Of course, um, but I, I think things evolve for sure. For example, uh, 
um, yeah, in, uh, if you look in, in, bypass, for, in bypass surgery uh, during the 80s and in the 2010, I think that it was forgotten everywhere in the world due to some trials which were uh, practically uh, cannot be taken actually um, into consideration uh, seriously. Uh, but nonetheless, I think that uh, the courses um, improve uh, um, the neurosurgeon's uh, hands-on skills. That means that your your personal hands-on skills improve. Whether you will do this approach or you will not do this approach, you may not be doing bypass, but training uh, in a specific area of, with uh, 10 all sutures and a microscope at a higher level will improve your uh, skills as a neurosurgeon. That is why whether you will do a skill-based approach or you will not do it, this first will give you knowledge, which you will have, and second will improve your skills to a level which is higher compared to the other trainees which are around you, for example. Totally agree. A lot of the, the courses provide exposure to microsurgical training. It's not that we want everyone to go and do bypasses uh, because it's not possible, but those are transferable skills that they can use in their micro neurosurgical operations on a day-to-day -day basis. And any other thoughts about the future? Well, the future is bright, I think. We're getting back <laughs> on our feet from the COVID uh, pandemic, but um, we think of diver uh, diversifying our portfolio of courses. Uh, it is clearly there is a need for hands-on training because this is practically now the only possibility for trainees to train hands-on rather than training in the OR. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think that it will be my uh, goal to, to increase the number of courses. I try to, to make more cranial step one double and cranial step two double, same for spine, and, uh, and try to diverse, diversify the portfolio in all different aspects of neurosurgery so that the, the trainees have more options, possibilities, and of course not wait too long because we have a long waiting list, obviously, and we could improve that. Indeed, we have long waiting lists, but uh, that's a sign that the courses are popular and and delivering their aims. So, thank you to Nikolai for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on our courses. Thank you.